Here's 2015 question four. This is looking like a slope fields separable differential equations problem here, okay? So sketching a slope field, again, just follow it. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys have that taken care of, okay? But please text me if you don't. I'm going to move on to part B. Part B, they ask us to find the second derivative, okay? So here's what you guys do. dy dx is equal to 2x minus y. You take the derivative one more time, okay? But with respect to that variable, okay? So the derivative of 2x is just 2 dx minus the derivative of y is just dy. And then you're going to divide both of those by dx again. Some of you know how to cut your corners, and that's fine. So basically, this is what we have. Our second derivative will equal 2 minus dy dx. But wait, dy dx, we know what that is, okay? That's just 2 minus what we had originally. This does pop up very often, you guys. Okay, so we'll leave it just like that equals equal they distributed the negative there same thing really okay then they ask you determine the concavity of all solutions if you're in quadrant two so some background knowledge if you're in quadrant two you're right over here so think about every generic point in quadrant two what do you know about the x value what do you know about the y value right you know that you have to have something negative comma positive Okay, so that means x is negative and y is positive. So if I distribute this here, I would get 2 minus 2x plus y. Okay, if you know that x is negative, then that negative number times this negative 2 will give you something positive. Okay, you know that the 2 already here in the front is positive. And the y coordinate is also going to be something positive. So you know no matter what, any point in the second quadrant will give me something that comes out positive. Okay? So that means the second derivative will always be positive. So what does it mean when the second derivative is positive, right? It tells you that the functions will always be concave up, which is where they came up with that solution there. Okay? Here's part C. Let f be the particular solution to the differential equation, okay, with the initial condition, f of 2 equals 3. Uh, they want to know if f has a local min, local max, or neither. Okay, so this one, not too popular with a, b. It does pop up a lot in b, c, but this is where you would use the second derivative test. We didn't use it too often because it's really a very specific case, depending on what you don't have here, okay? So here's what you wanna do. You first wanna see what happens with the slope at this point, okay? So you check the slope, the first derivative at two comma three, okay? So it actually comes out to one. So because it comes out to one, it's not a critical number. And if it's not a critical number, there's no way that it could be a local min or max. So right there, you're done. Okay? Therefore, it's neither. Now, in the case that it does come out to zero, all right, let's just do a hypothetical on the side here, even though we're done with part C. Let's say your first derivative came out to zero. Right now, you have this point, Okay? What you want to do now is you want to take that critical number and then you want to plug it into the second derivative. And then three things can happen. It could either come out positive, negative, or zero. So here's how you do it. If it comes out positive, if the second derivative comes out positive, that means the function is concave up, meaning this is a local minimum. Okay, now what if the second derivative was negative, right? Then you know your function is concave down, meaning you have a local maximum. Now if it's equal to zero, you're screwed, okay? Equal to zero just means that you have, 
you don't have enough information okay but they will never give that to you so just keep that in mind again this is called the second derivative test okay um again not used a lot but it is used a lot in bc it occasionally pops up in ab all right here's the last one part d find the values of the constants m and b for which y equals mx plus b is the solution this one here is an absolute outlier so let me start with that okay okay so if this if y equals mx plus b is your solution then it's derivative if i take the derivative of that equation it should just be m because the derivative of mx is just m and b is just a constant so if you take the derivative of a constant it's just zero okay so our original differential equation dy dx is equal to 2x minus y we now know that since this is a solution, this whole thing here has to equal m. Okay? Now, originally, we know that y is equal to mx plus b. So I'm going to plug that in. Again, understand it, but don't spend too much time on this problem here. Um, here's what we have, all right? We have m equals 2x minus mx minus b. Okay? I'm going to bring this m over. So now I have 0 equals 2x minus mx minus m minus b. Okay? Just to make it look a little bit easier, 2 minus m will be left if I factor out an x from the first two terms, okay? Now the next two terms, negative m minus b, I'm just gonna group that together. So all I did was I rewrote it, okay? So this equal sign tells you a lot. That means the left side has to equal the right side. I know that this term right here is linear because it has an x next to it. So if you notice, there is no linear on the left side here, which means that 2 minus m has to come out to 0 because there's no linear on the left. Okay? Now over here, negative m minus b, even though they look like letters, they don't have an x next to it, so this is considered a constant. A constant has to equal a constant. If they are truly equal, left side has to equal the right side. So in this case, 0 has to equal negative m minus b. You guys now have a system of equations here, okay? If you look at just the first equation, you can kind of just guess that m is equal to 2. Okay? And if m is 2, and you plug it into your second equation, you could actually find out that b is also negative 2. Okay, I'll let you guys think about that, but again, don't spend too much time on this part, all right?